what we're all about too. And today we are continuing this series, Removing the Stone. And if you miss any of the previous videos, you can look in the description, okay? So the stone that I want to talk to you about is disobedience. And when you hear the word disobedience, you may think that's something simple and easy to understand. But is it? For you to know that, you have to look at the fruits, the results of your obedience or disobedience to God. Okay? So for you to even understand that better, I'm going to give you an example. Pretend you bought a chair and the chair that you bought is those chairs that you have to build. Right? So you look at the picture and you start building the chair. And in the end, you look and you have extra pieces. Or your chair is not strong, it's all wobbly. And you, my God, what happened? What happened to my chair? What is going on here? Or um, you want to make a cake. Pretend you want to make a delicious vanilla cake. And you start to put all the ingredients in, in, you mix the ingredients, you put in the oven and 30, 40 minutes later, you're going to open the oven and you look at the cake and you cannot believe your eyes. What is this? <laughs> it doesn't look like a vanilla cake and you taste it, doesn't taste like a vanilla cake and you start wondering what went wrong and you retrace your steps and when you look, well, the recipe said, you know, three cups of flour, for example, and you said, no, oh, that's too little, I'm gonna put five. Or the eggs, you, you think about mm, three eggs, no, that's too much, no, 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 I'm gonna put just one egg. And then, in the end, you're gonna have something that, that doesn't even look like a cake. That's your result, and you may feel frustrated with your result, uh, waste time, energy build, making this cake, or building this chair, and it's not good. And then you see, mm, that's why, right? You didn't follow the recipe. You add stuff, you took it away. The chair, what about the chair? If you are that person that doesn't even like to look at the menu, some people don't have the patience to look at the menu. They start looking, oh, too much steps to follow. I can't follow this. So they start building on their own and then the result is not what they're expecting. And with God, it's not so different. We have to follow God's direction, okay? And thinking about that, I want to share a passage with you. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this river of living water that the Bible talks about here is the Holy Spirit. So if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, there is a step that you have to follow. The recipe is here. And I want to focus on that with you, okay? He who believes in me, as the scripture has said. So for you to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to believe, you have to obey God according to the word of God. So you are, maybe you are in the church seeking the Holy Spirit and you didn't receive the Holy Spirit yet because you are not obeying God the way that the Bible talks about, the way that the Bible describes. Maybe you are doing obeying God your own way. And obeying God your own way is disobeying God. So I'll repeat that for you to really understand. Obeying God your own way is disobeying God. I was, I was someone like that. I was someone who were in the church for several years seeking the Holy Spirit, but I didn't receive the Holy Spirit. I was praying, I was fasting, seeking God at three o'clock in the morning, but still I didn't receive the Holy Spirit. And I was empty, I was sad, and I was wondering, my God, what am I doing wrong? Show me. But the reason why I didn't receive the Holy Spirit is because I was not obeying Him. I was doing things my own way. I was letting go of things halfway. And halfway brought me half results. So I knew that I had to let go of some friendships that was influenced me in a negative way, but I didn't. I was half, you know, half in the church, half out. I was like two people. In the church, I was someone. Outside of the church, I was somebody else. I had a grudge, resentments towards my father. And I thought I forgave him, you know, out of, you know, just with my mouth, I said, you know, I forgave him. 
but I really didn't forgive him for the things that he said, the things that had happened in our family. So I, when I saw that, I decided, you know what, God, enough is enough. I'm going to forgive the way that I have to forgive, the way that the Bible talks about. Because if you think about the, what the Word of God says about those who hurt you, those who persecute you, those who hate you, what does the Bible talk about? You have to pray for them, you have to love them. So I decided to change my relationship with my father. And one day we were sitting down at the table eating and I went and I spoke to him. I was like, Dad, I love you. And he looked at me like, okay. My mother and my brother were puzzled. And I felt so awkward that I got up from the table and I went to my room. I didn't know what to do. But that was the first step to rebuild this relationship, to do what was right according to the word of God. And I start fighting myself, doing things the right way. I start praying for my father, really fasting for him. I went to Thursday's meeting to pray for his soul because before I didn't care for his soul. I was thinking, well, he's in the church like me, he's listening to the message. And if he wants to be saved, he should give his life to God. What can I do? I can do nothing about him. It's him and God. But I didn't pray for God to change him, to transform him, to save him. I was not saved myself. But when I decided, when I saw myself in that situation, I said, no, enough. I forgive. I let it go. And I start changing my life around. So maybe you are someone like that. They are in the church and you don't know why you don't have the Holy Spirit. So I want you to really think the way that you are obeying God, okay? Or maybe you're even someone who already have the Holy Spirit. Maybe you are an assistant, someone who has the Spirit of God. But if God is asking you to change something and you are not changing, you are taking your time there to improve things, to change, you are disobeying God as well. Think about that. Reflect about how you are obeying God. And for you that are there just like I was without the Spirit of God and you don't know what to do, I'm going to give you some steps for you to follow that I followed, that I did, and I received the Spirit of God. Because after I forgave my father, let it go of the friendship or bad habits that I had, a few weeks later, I received the Holy Spirit. And what a day, the greatest day of my life. So, First step for you to receive the Holy Spirit is that I did. Number one, no more excuses. No more half lies. Oh, I cannot tell the truth because this, because of that, I'm going to get in trouble. No. Oh, I cannot let it go of this boyfriend of bad friendship. Yes, you can. No more excuses because if I did, you can do as well. Okay? So no more excuses why you are obeying God. Why not obeying God? disobeying God, right? You're not obeying Him. You are doing things your own way. So that's it. Step number one, no more excuses. Okay? And I want, and then step number two that I want to share with you. You have to revolt. You really have to say enough is enough. I don't accept to be empty, sad, lonely in the church for so long without the presence of God. Maybe you did one fast of them, two, three, and you still don't have the Holy Spirit. Enough. I'm done with this. Which leads you to step number three. It's a total surrender. You surrender yourself to God and you repent about the things that you've done, the things that you still have inside. You forgive whoever you have to forgive. But it's not like a, a remorse, it's a repentance. Because remorse is that emotion stage that you cry. And I've been through that. I know what it is to feel remorse. You cry, oh Lord, forgive me, forgive me. And then one week later, two weeks later, you are doing the same thing again. This is remorse. No. Repentance is that moment that you say, I'm going to do things different. That leads you to step number four and final, and final step. is the step that you start doing things different. If you have a grudge, go there and forgive that person. If you have a relationship that doesn't please God, cut it off. If you are lying, stop lying. Prove to God that you really want to receive His Spirit. And I am sure that you will receive the Holy Spirit. 
Okay? I hope this video helped you. May God bless you and see you next time.